This is part two. Wait. After we've changed the battery on my camera. All right. Go ahead. So, my story into getting into sound. Um, I thought you might appreciate this, so I wanted to like, yeah, go I through hear it. it. And I, and it kind of leads it, or it, it, it's about being going into the fire pit kind of thing, like that okay. whole story. Like, so our sound guy left church, um, got upset or whatever, and mm. left. He, um, he was a, a musician. And sound guy actually was kind of funny, um, but we had uh, purchased the Behringer X32. This was like 15 years ago. Give you give you some perspective. So this yeah. is like a long time ago. Um, and he was the only one that really knew how to operate it. Um, and was just he. I mean, he was the guy that he could read a manual and he'd figure things out and stuff like that. But he was also a really good musician, and so. He would do sound quite a bit. Well, when he left, it was like there was this void, and it was like, what do we do now? And mm -hmm. so, like anything in church, and I feel like you know this kind of as a PK, but it's like whenever there's like a thing that needs to be a position that needs to be filled, it's like, all right, I got to try to figure out how to do this. Yep. Well, that's how that's how you know I did it at my church. So it was like, you know, I, my first thing ever like doing volunteer that I remember was a lyric tech, pro presenter one mm. i'm just kidding it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago uh it was a long time ago though um i think we were on easy worship at one point but we switched over to pro presenter and then um, so were y'all on pro presenter early because do we yeah. we didn't get over to pro presenter until way later i, I forget what we were yeah. doing so like song show plus or something oh wait maybe it was song show plus that's what dude I that think was we were the, on for, we were on that for yeah. a minute um but yeah we, we switched over to pro presenter pretty pretty early i would say a lot earlier than most other churches but that was okay that was becoming the standard as far as like maybe non-denom churches or whatever so yeah yeah um we we transferred over that but i was doing that when i was like 13 14 whatever so really really young um and then when i was like 16 is when the sound guy left but at that point i was playing drums because i was i was 16 at that point so i started playing drums and whatnot and uh then he left so it was like we have this need and I was interested in it. Didn't know a whole lot about it, but I knew that it sounded like bad. And so I wanted to make it, <laughs> I wanted to make yeah. it sound better. Right. <laughs> and, um, uh, this was like a week prior to Easter. All right. So I'm like, okay, I gotta, you know, we're trying to make, we're trying to make this Easter service happen. How do I make it sound better? That's like, that's going through my head. Okay. I need to make sure like, we're gonna have a lot of visitors here. So let, I'm going to try to learn this console and try to figure it out. So I'm there the night prior to Easter, the night before Easter. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to stay up late and like learn this console and stuff. It gets to be about 10, 11 o'clock. And I'm there with uh, one of my best friends. And um, he's one of the musicians at the church and vocalist. And so he's, we're kind of like playing tracks through the console and trying to like get better or whatever. Well, like I accidentally like delete the show file on the console. And... There's no like backup or redundancy. The backup is with it's the sound gone. guy that left. Yeah, the backup's with the sound guy, and I'm. And calling he's not the giving it back. <laughs> and he, the sound guy, is not calling me, not calling me back. Like I'm trying to search for flash drives. Like there was just no, nothing. And dude, I'm I'm like, this is eleven o'clock. Like there's not like there's I'm in trouble. And oh. my friend, his his dad was the um, associate pastor at the time. And he was like, hey, you need to come back home. So it's like, basically, I was at, at that point, I was there by myself. And I'm like, I got to figure this thing out. You know, like, <laughs> this is the heat of the moment oh, thing. dude. Well, that prior week, and I think this was a God thing, personally, like, looking back at it. Yeah. But I had met this random Guitar Center guy, like, that was selling gear. So you made a connection. Made a connection with this random guy. Like, I don't even know why I had his number, but like I yeah. had his number cause we connected. Um, and I, I'm probably cause I was like interested in sound or whatever. And like, we had that conversation. I don't even remember how I, we got each other's contact information. I call him like 1130, 12 o'clock and he's doing a gig. He's doing like a bar gig, like downtown Minneapolis. Okay. And I'm like, dude, like I will literally pay you. I don't even care. 
I'm in this really bad situation. I deleted my show file. There's no way I can come back. So he's like, dude, I'll, I'm doing this bar gig, but in between sets, I can help you. Uh, like I'll, That's I'll call you. That's funny. So like, you, they, you know, you get like 15 minute breaks between sets yeah. and stuff when you're talking about shows like that. And, um, so he was like, first thing you need to do is you need, to, he's texting me. He's like, you need to download, um, like team view or whatever. And then you need to be able to hook up the console to the computer so I can like remote into the computer, into the, into the console. Cause you could do that, bro. I was like, I don't even know like what these buttons do at that yeah, point. Yeah. And I'm like, you're telling me how to connect a <laughs> console to a computer. So I'm, I'm saying, I'm telling you like, I don't know how I did this. I, I feel like I am a good problem solver. So this is one of like the benefits of my personality or whatever. But like I figured out how to like connect the X32 to the computer, get TeamViewer loaded up so he could remotely access the console. Dude, that's stressful. That's stressful, dude. And like I, I mean, it took me a minute to do that to troubleshoot how to do that because you're talking about like IP settings and uh, this is like yeah, IT level no stuff. Way. Like I have no yeah. idea. What, I'm, I haven't even seen a digital console before this. Like before this console, you know, uh, we were working on a. Uh, you got I can't even think a Mackie 244 like analog okay. mixer you know that was my first console and uh so so like we get that connected well now it's like well now how do we set it up so I'm literally having to trace cables figuring out where things are located and stuff like I'm literally like on the ground just tracing cables for hours oh, trying to figure God. out I'm like okay it's patched here and like he's I'm seeing him work on the console so I'm like, okay, that's how he's doing that. That's how he's, you know, I'm like taking Dude, notes that's mentally. that's crazy. And, uh, you know, because I don't know the technical stuff. And yeah, of course not. <laughs> and, like, I'm like, okay, it's still not working. You know, we're still not working. It's like 5 in the morning. You know, like, I think by six in, mor- 6 in the morning, we're finally able to get sound out of the speakers type of thing. And I was like, and he's like, bro, I have to go to bed. I'm, I just got back home. I have to go to bed. I think you're in a, like, we got everything patched and routed and stuff. You got sound. Yeah. So like, that's Dude, as good what as, a kind guy. Yeah. And honestly, like I never paid him. Like he never asked for money for that or anything like that. Um, eventually what I did though, uh, like the week after is I actually paid him to come out and help me with the church, like at the church and stuff like that and paid him out of my own pocket just because, I felt responsible for messing it up yeah. and I wanted to make sure he felt like we appreciated, you know what he did. So, so th- that's interesting. And I, I don't want to, I want you to come back to your story, but I yeah. was talking with Ryan Johns and he had said that there was a, a stigma around. around sound tech guys. They're just like mean dudes. They just don't like, like, they're just like this, you know, <laughs> the, uh, the, the stigma, obviously not probably yeah. inner circle, but from the outside is like intimidating. Like, I don't want to go talk to you. I don't want to mess with you because like, I'm nervous, man. You look like intimidating, but I feel like generally speaking, especially when I start working, you know, in the inner circle is everybody's very collaborative. Everybody's very kind and seems like everybody wants to help everybody. There's been a change in culture though. Uh, in the last 10 years, over the last 10 years, we've seen this culture shift. Um, where we did have mean sound guys, right? And yeah. it was, I don't necessarily want to speak on where that came from necessarily, but. It, Do you know uh, where I, it came from? I have no idea. <laughs> it's honestly, just a thing. What ha- a lot of times what happens, I think, is that your team on stage is trying to, is like asking for things and communicating things oh. to the sound guy, right? And heat of the moment, right? Like, two hours before service starts and you don't have a sound console set up like yeah. nobody's like nobody's like oh hey could you do this they're not talking in a yeah. nice tone they're like oh god you need to get this done now you know and like yeah yeah it's like yeah. you know like catching heat and it's like heat of the moment stuff is and it's like it's not necessarily what you said but it's how you said it kind of thing sure and so then now like their response is negative like their response is going to be like well, this person's yelling at me, so I'm going to yell back kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so then there became, becomes like a wall built up, right, because of that. And it, it honestly, like it only has to happen once. That mm. I said this uh, to someone uh, this week. Like I feel like the only reason that I do get work as a like a monitor engineer specifically um, is because I'm good at working with people. 
like i don't think it's be- Bro, necessarily because of my skill set that is like 90 percent of getting a job is being able to work with people yeah it's like are you gonna be a good person to hang around are you gonna be a good person like to interact with because like yeah. if i get a, if i go work a, an event and like people like i'm not doing things for people or i have a bad attitude and i've had some cases and honestly like i've had a situation where I, um a while back where like I had to really self-reflect and apologize to certain people because I had a bad attitude in in a certain situation. And it was like, that actually has changed people's perspective about me, like Mm. long-term. So it only takes one time for you to mess up and respond badly to a situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, and um, it's hard to, it's hard to get people to, to uh change that back um but it's like how you know it's like i have 50 people asking me for changes for example on monitors like it's so easy to get overwhelmed and just be like i can't do it i can't do it i'm trying to do this Mm. instead you know like and i could respond angrily because like people are like in the moment heated right yeah it'd be so easy for me to just respond and be like oh i can't do it and be angry about it but it's like they're looking like I'm there to support them and what they're doing. So ultimately if I have their best interest in my, at heart, I'm going to be like, totally, let me get, you, let me get you. Uh, I just got to take care of this other thing first. You know, it's like, yeah. it's how I responded to it in that moment where it's like, everything's failing, everything's crashing around you. And it's like, if I can be that calm presence, like they're going to be calm back. You know what I'm saying? That's like so they true. might, if you're in control, then they're chilling out. They're like, Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, and obviously there's like some self confidence as far as like knowing what you do, right? Like, sure. If I if I don't know what I'm doing and I'm in that moment, <laughs> like, like people are gonna be mad at me, mad at you no matter what, even if you have a good yeah. attitude, right? But like, um, but it's gonna, but like, I've been in 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 places where like it doesn't like something's not working, some a piece of gear fails on you, and you're like, hey, I am so sorry. Like it's out of my hands. I can't really do anything. I'm gonna try as best as I can to give you give you what you need, um, and you know I'm just so sorry. Like that worked out better. They were still upset about the situation, yeah. obviously, but like at least you told them you were gonna be able to do whatever you could do. And honestly, a lot of t- most of the time they're gonna respect that. You know yeah. they're gonna respect like the situation for what it is, and they're gonna respect your attitude. But it's yeah, it's like those responses in in the heat of the moment that kind of gets you. I actually talk a lot about my volunteer team about dealing with. We have you know we have one guy uh, on my team that was hard to. Um, he had a hard time working in situations where it was like high pressure situations. Um, he he's like he couldn't multitask. He'd only do one thing at once, and he's still that way. And so we had to figure out how to use him, how to use his talents in the best way possible, right? Like him mixing is not necessarily the best role, okay. and and that's you know, and that's what it's a conversation we had to have. It was like, but he served really well as a, an assistant and uh, as a stagehand and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He was really good working with people, very communicative and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But as soon as like high pressure situations, multitask that kind of thing. Did, does not go well so one of the things i we had to work with him for several months on was like as soon as more two more than two people like asked him for changes or different things he would get like super frustrated and just be like he's trying to figure it out try to help out and stuff like that so yeah his heart's right but in that moment he just responds like loud like really loud like all doesn't sound angry necessarily but it's uh, to them it does and perception but, is yeah reality. But it's too much perception yeah. is reality so um yeah. so now they're like afraid to ask him for changes and stuff and i was like well hold up hold up hey we're we're gonna <laughs> i was like we're gonna figure this out Let me, let's do this one thing and we'll get back and we'll get those changes done for you and then it's like what else can we do? do you have anything else that you guys need like it was like following up with that and so teaching him how to interact in those high pressure situations so that he wouldn't respond out of out of anger was one of the that's really things. good just like personal relation training yeah and that's and that honestly that's that's what my role is as a monitor engineer is like personal relations it's like yeah isn't like it does involve talent but like 
if I didn't have that personal relation side, like I would not be getting work at all. Well, and that, that's what Ryan was saying as well. Is like he'll hire somebody, he'll work with somebody if he enjoys working with them. And he's like, yeah. I'll, you know, I'll never call the guy back who I'm like, eh, I don't, I don't enjoy working yeah. with this guy, or they're unresponsive, yeah. or they have a bad attitude. Exactly, and that's the culture shift that's happened through the church, and even, and I'd say mostly in the secular side, is. Um, it was a big deal. Like, and if you remember like general conference, uh, yeah. we had a certain monitor engineer that was like, like not, would just not do stuff or he would yell and, and not, and just act angry and whatnot. Well, what's funny is that used to be kind of the culture in sound guys for forever. And even like yeah. produ- tour production guy, like tour managers yep. and stuff like that, that used to be, oh, a I, big, I see it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be a big thing. Well, now it's like, I'm not going to work with you. I'm just going to go and work for a different tour. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I can do the same thing I'm doing now and work for somebody else that actually appreciates me. And so the culture has actually shifted on, and I'm really thankful that we've been able to see this shift, but we've seen it in the church world too, um, where like people can't really get away with yelling at you anymore. Like nobody wants to work with you. You're going to get fired from the artist if you kind of do that stuff. And there's Dude, still, and I, it's because we take it so, that. we take ourselves so seriously, man. <laughs> and it's like, dude, at the end of the day, you're you're helping, you're serving. Yeah. And when you start taking yourself more seriously than the, the work that you're doing, yeah. nobody wants to work with you at that point. It's That's like be true. collaborative, be, be an yeah. enjoyable person to be around. And you can still get the yeah. job done. You don't have to yeah. yell at somebody to get your job done more effectively. Yeah, exactly. And I, I know pressures pressures can get high and tension. Nobody wants tension can nobody rise. wants to work in a hostile environment, you know. Not like, at all. You know, and Not I think the other thing too is uh, one of my I have like a I have a mission statement core values. Keep going. I'm gonna put my laptop in. I'm like no, batteries it's... just dying everywhere. Keep keep talking. <laughs> I have um, core values, a mission statement, um, and job descriptions for everybody on my team and stuff like that. And one of the things that I talk about. Uh, even doing clinics outside um, is that uh, I've been in situations where uh, like I've had a sound guy that I was assisting. Um, somebody came up last minute and was like, Hey, can you record this on a flash drive for me? And the guy yell, puts his hands up in the air and he's like yelling and he's like, you're going to ask me two, 20 seconds before the service starts to do this. I can't do it. I can't do it. And, and both sides were like wrong. The first first thing is like we knew about this event for a year. He could have been like a month ahead, been like, "Hey, can you have? Can I have you record this for the social media team on flash drive?" You know, or whatever. And and like, and he wouldn't yeah. known. And it was like easy. The other side of it though is like reality is is that flash drive. It took five seconds to plug in and press the record button on it. Yep. And it was like the easiest thing to do. So instead of looking for ways we can't look for reason look for ways we can so uh let me say that again that's looking good. for looking for reasons or looking for reasons instead of looking for reasons we can't you're looking for ways we can having that yeah. attitude of trying to help the team and uh um, this was actually a big thing for me uh especially from like a pastoral team to me kind of level like they would ask me to do something i was like like we don't have the people or we don't have the gear to do that or accomplish that it's so easy to say no, but it's like, if I'm like on the team, if I'm trying to figure out how to support my pastoral team and support the vision of the leadership team, what my attitude should be would be one of looking for a way we can. And then mm-hmm. it's having that conversation with them. It's like, let me think of a way and let me get back to you. Or if it's like heat in the moment, right before service starts, it's like, um, we can, but I need this and this. You know, so it's yeah. like, it's not, I'm not just saying no, you're just, instead of saying no, you're saying like, I could do this, but I need this piece of gear and I need two more people. So that there's a marketing trick or really it's a sales trick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know what you're going to talk about. <laughs> so it's, it's the, it's the never saying no, it's the yeah. never saying can't, but it's always yeah. saying yes, but, or yes. And, uh, and, and you give them positive affirmation prior to giving them the negative yeah. and the negative never feels bad. It's always exactly. like, oh, this guy's agreeable. Look at this, yeah, this guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this guy's on my team. But you just exactly. told them no. But they don't yeah. even, you know, they it's don't not even registering as a no. They're going to they're just be like, oh, I guess we can't do that then. Oh, yeah, or we're going to have yeah, to wait yeah. until next week to do it. Or, you know, like, like yeah. 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 But 
<laughs> and then they're like, oh, well, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but it's like it's having that attitude of like they're like, oh, he's looking for ways he can do it instead of like yeah. just saying no out of the gate. And then it's like a stop door. So then he's going to go to someone else and turn oh, the amount of times. I, and you, you know, I said line out earlier, but the amount of times I've asked for, like, hey, I have, I, I have everything for you. I have all the cables. I have my, <laughs> you know, I have my left XLR. Like, do you mind, please, left. just give. What about me, the right? Just give me. I, I only need a mono. I don't need. <laughs> I don't need stereo. <laughs> mono. Dude, any any social media Mono's guy for beginners, like, hey, can bro. I get a stereo mix? Oh, bro, people are listening to it out of this. <laughs> they have no idea. They I can hear no stereo idea. on my phone. I can hear stereo. <laughs> Sheesh. it's the it, it's the it's the frustrating thing and i i get it though because i walk up to somebody like right before service starts and it's like oh dude i should have done this and i'm like mm-hmm. tentatively creeping up to the sound guy hey um hey yeah. can, can i please get this recorded i uh i was at uh north little rock i'm actually flying out in a few hours um to go I there love it. but um i uh was at north little rock doing a funeral for a uh political uh, it was like the yeah, you were. The city. Yeah, I was doing monitor. So like in that situation, I was monitors. So I'm not getting any feeds beside. Like I'm not putting out any feeds except for anything stage and side stage and backstage or whatever. So we have a broadcast engineer that's actually putting out bro- the broadcast feeds and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, well, that's that's Vito's area kind of thing. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you know that's that, that, hey, I man. think that's fair. All right. It's all good, bro. I got what I needed. Well, what's funny though is that like you you asked for that or whatever, but like for the funeral, like we had two uh, TV broadcast guys come in and ask for feeds ten minutes before. Oh, started. seriously! Literally ask for feeds, and they're like, "Yeah," and the cameras are going to be at front of house, at pro so, level. So we're like, "You guys are pros, like." Like, why are you asking That's 10 wild. minutes before this for the service starts for feeds yeah. and stuff like that? Like, this is so unprofessional. Well, anyways, it's like, well, we got to make this happen. So I'm running to front of house, getting, trying to grab some of the volunteers and like, we got to get lines out to these guys. They're looking to broadcast the TV and stuff like that. So I'm sending, I'm routing signal from the broadcast console to the front of house console to get the broadcast feed to the cameras. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're sending up like, just wherever they want to it was like they're just kind of just owning the situation so yeah it's like you know obviously i said no to you but i said yes to other people so and that's fine and you know what that's okay <laughs> i just i just kind of know now where our friendship is and that's that's totally fine that's I, totally fine yeah i think it's like it's like you should feel better about it because you know it's like well, one, it's like a, a thing you do with your it's like a thing you do with your family it's like you can only get away with like tearing your family and your friends apart. You can't do it with uh, strangers. I'm family. Yeah, I'm that's family. we're close, so I can do that. I think I'd asked you for a line out to an H six Zoom. Yeah, and it just felt like it was too much. And you know what they had? They had their own recording system for social, which oh, Little Rock has it all. So I was like, oh, nice. You guys have your own system <laughs> just for social. Sick. Yeah, they have like seen. they have like ten moderators like in a back room. I know, like interacting know. with the online audience. I've never seen that much. I, yeah, That's crazy. I, when they told me that, they were like, "Yeah," and this is where people respond to comments. I thought they were joking, and I laughed, and I was like, "Oh, that's that's good." And they're like, "No, no, seriously." Just, yeah, I was like wondering why there's like ten, like uh, before service started, so there's like twenty people like walking to the back production rooms, and I'm like, "Why are yeah. all these people like who's this? The choir and stuff like that?" It was no, yeah. it was like all the moderators. <laughs> Yeah, this is. The, yeah, like, I, I mean, that's crazy to get to the level where you're like, you need people to be like active to like yeah. respond to. You know, we're yeah. praying, whatever. Yeah, whatever they do, I don't know what they do. Oh, okay. So let me go. Let me finish this. Uh, yeah, in yeah. The fire go moment, back to it. In the fire beginning story, their origins. Let me go back to the origins of me starting out in sound. So six. Which this six, was eight. before you or after you worked at Costco. This was during when I worked at Costco. Yeah. During when you worked at Costco. Yeah, you remember that, huh? So, yeah, Dude. so I worked at Costco for like seven years. Uh, crazy, crazy life. That was a, that was the life before I live. That's the life that I lived before this life. You had a house. Yeah, I had a house. I had a whole career. Um, you, yeah, you had everything all lined up. And that's a whole God thing. That's a whole not, yeah. I don't know if this this uh, podcast gets spiritual or anything like that. But do we get? Do we we do it all here? God, uh, God, <laughs> God worked with me over a year or two, and then um, I ended up changing 
my career. Uh, I went to school at IBC for four years and changed my career to audio engineering versus um, versus management. So, mm. uh, yeah, different different life, uh, crazy. Uh, but let me uh, let me touch back on the origins of my sound career, or again, passionate about it. So we're like six a.m. Sunday morning. I got two hours before the rehearsal starts. So I'm basically like checking microphones myself, ha- like checking keyboards and stuff, trying to figure out how to get it sound running back and forth in the church, trying to make stuff happen. I finally like by eight o'clock, eight o'clock, I'm like, okay, it's workable. So you stayed up all night. I stayed up all night. <sighs> it was like, there was no way I couldn't, you know, there's just, I just had to, and I couldn't leave. I, th- I don't think I had a car. I don't think I had a car at that point. I can't remember. Maybe I did. No, I had a car at that point. So, um, but like, I didn't have time to like do anything. You know, I had to be at the church. And then as soon as people came in, I was like, Hey, can you start checking this? Can you start checking this? I'm trying trying to figure out how this EQ thing works and like low pass filter and like all these, trying to get the level. And, uh, honestly, like it, it wasn't great, but I can honestly say, it was within the margins of where a typical service for us was. Okay. Like, so like it was nowhere clear to being good, but it was, it was like workable for our, for us where we were at that moment. And, um, honestly, after I, I had Tim, uh, his name's Tim from guitar center. He's the one that kind of helped me, uh, that night. And, uh, I had him come in and I had him show me a bunch of stuff on the console, some sound stuff, and then, um, and then basically I went from there and just started learning, watching YouTube videos, asking him questions, asking other people questions. And I got passionate about it because it was like, in my eyes, it was a fail in our church. It was like, mm. this is the thing that's disconnecting people. And that's how I, and honestly, and even though I, I wasn't like saying it that way in my mind or whatever, like that's ultimately what was happening in my brain. It was like. I was seeing people disengaged or walking out yeah. of service because it was too harsh and too loud or whatever. And so that spoke to me because I was like, well, I want people, I want new visitors to come in and not like want to leave. And, and we had situations and I, I do like remember a situation where we had people that were new, like first service walked in and walked out and, um, and beyond. And that's why I say now it's like, you could potentially have blood on your hands as a sound operator if wow. you're doing something that would make someone walk out of the service and never receive something maybe they could have received if you were doing a better job. That's, like, I mean, bro, that, that's humbling and a little convicting as well because I, I don't I don't even know, I don't know many people that would take it that serious. And it is that serious. I, like, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah, you don't but know the, I, you don't know the implications of what yeah. you what you do in that service, and that's the thing is it's more serious. It's more serious than just like this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I enjoy doing. Yeah. When you decide I want to be involved in a ministry at church, you're essentially saying I'm signing up to be responsible for how people experience church, and exactly. that's a huge responsibility. It's not just like oh let's let's stick you know somebody random in this position because they want to be used. It's so yeah. much less about you being used and so much more about you doing what God's will is for whatever this thing is that you're being used in. And I think that's the part is we we make it about us and that's not what it's about. That's whenever the attitude starts to come out. That's whenever the selfishness comes out is when it's about us and it's not about others. Not uh, man, it, yeah, it, and it really does. Like it starts at the first impressions and then it, it ends right there at the you know guest reception at the very end of service. Yep. And what what's in between – hopefully hopefully the person that comes in is experiencing the love of god and not experiencing the selfishness of man yeah and you know and the, and from a creative standpoint we're creating this story for them yeah. as like from the time that they even before the time that they actually enter onto the property like our social media and our our website and that that that's creating an impression but like we're yeah. creating a story. As soon as they walk in, we have we have our first layer of impression team out there in the parking lot, uh, navigating people where to park, especially for first time guests. 
but even for even for existing members i think they, this we want to give a similar experience to them too um but we're trying to create this story of of like we want you to be here we we're, we're trying to pl- create an atmosphere of being well like welcoming and um and talking about like you know when we talk about like videography and we talk about sound we talk about like creating this experience from from the first note being played to the to the last note being played and um i, I hear this i hear about this more with lighting and video but the same thing goes for any i think anything is we're trying to create this experience to uh uh how, how do i want to say this like We're trying to create this experience so when someone comes in, they feel welcome. When they sit down, they're going to be like open to hearing what's going to happen over the, from the stage team, right? And then it's like we're creating this environment where we're trying to incite them to worship God, mm-hmm. to, to and with the idea that like God might touch them or God might send send them someone from our first impression teams or some someone yeah. in the He might use someone to speak to them, right? But typically, it's going to be from from the stage. He's going to be use use someone from the stage to speak to them and stuff in those moments. But we're creating this this story of ups and downs, of thankfulness and praise to God, to um, to uh, to our offering and to to praying for someone. Like we're creating this like story basically for someone, and we want them to be on this journey with us. Yeah. So if there's hiccups in that journey, right? Like, it's like, if there's like, like, okay, our first impressions team did a great job, but then it's like, like, nobody knows what they're doing to start the service. And it's like, okay, what are we doing? This is really awkward. Yeah. Now all those feelings of them being accepting to what's going to happen, just close, like the walls just came back up. So now like, we didn't know what they were, we didn't know what we were doing. And now it's awkward. Now they don't know what to do. Mm. And another like subtle thing to that is that they're going to be like, they weren't prepared enough to, you know, like this is a subconscious thing. They weren't prepared enough to like start on time or to do this correctly. Like, I think we should think about it in the context of like, uh, of we didn't, we didn't prepare enough for them. Like why, why should we ask them for, for their attention if we weren't give weren't willing to prepare? Dude, that's good. That's good. I think that's a great point, actually, man, because, yeah, so we we have these expectations that, first of all, you're going to want to come back. Second of all, you're going to want to be a part of this community that we've we've built and grown here at this church. What makes somebody even want to be a part if when they're involved, it doesn't feel like anybody's taking it serious? Yeah, and everyone's and I think everyone's going to be like, oh, well, not everyone's got paid salary people on staff and not everyone's got the Mark Carlbergs or the Martin Libby's at their church. Like excellence is excellence is, um, relative. Yeah. I mean, you were not Mark Carlberg before you put the time in and exactly (laughs) developed the skills. (laughs) Excellence is relative. And so like you have a team at your church, like excellence for you is doing better than you did the day before it's this yeah. conti- it's it's a, it's like a heart of getting better it's not necessarily being at a certain level and the thing is and like everyone like comes to my church or says stuff about my church for example and they're like oh Maryville's like really made it you guys are there it's like dude ask anyone on my staff or pastoral team if we've made it and they're just gonna be like be like no, no. we're just trying to <laughs> learn how to do better like like yeah, yeah my pastoral team still goes out to other churches like to like different uh, clinics and stuff every year yeah to figure out what other churches are doing you know like we're there's on, nothing we, wrong with that we bring people in like we brought in chick-fil-a managers to train our first impression team we bring in lighting designers to train our lighting team and audio oh, engineers cool. to train our audio team like so that's the attitude and that's in in my opinion that's one of the reasons of the success that we have at Maryville is because of that attitude of excellence that ex- mm. the thing is like Maryville was a church of 50 people at one point yeah you know like 
we didn't magically just we weren't just magically big and we don't have like millionaires everywhere like that's not like a that's not a thing we just have a lot of faithful people that were willing to do second mortgages you know or you know do uh what are those refinance their mortgages and stuff and give that money to the church and pay for a new building and stuff like it didn't just magically happen but we had this we have this uh this culture of excellence and giving everything we can to God. So um, I think it's just, there's something to be said about that attitude. And like I said, it's all relative. Um, yeah. Well, so. I also think that, you, you, you know, I think look, in, look inwardly, you might not be a church like Maryville that has the finances to be able to bring in Chick-fil-A professionals to train your catering team, but you also might have skills in other areas internally that you don't even know about. And so I think look internally, see what you have, assess your congregation assess the team that you already have built and develop and train with what you have and grow that you don't have to bring in and pay money and spend a bunch i mean youtube is free the internet is free learn and develop but it takes time and intentionality and that's the last thing anybody really wants to give at the end of the day is do i really want to devote all of this time to this one thing that i have to do maybe twice a week but if we can get out of that mindset and we can like this is eternal, this has an eternal impact. This isn't just, you know, my hobby. Then I think it becomes so much more important than the career that we devote, you know, six, five days a week, you know, how many hours a day. It's yeah. it's eternal. Mark, thank you so much. And Appreciate I want to give you an opportunity here at the very end just to kind of if you have anything, if you don't have anything, no worries. But if you uh, if you have any thoughts, maybe something you've been thinking on something you've been brewing up maybe a a verse you've been reading whatever it might be but something to leave on uh and kind of just leave the listeners with uh a little word and uh, i'll give you that opportunity here at the end and then we'll wrap up dude thank you so much for having me um this has been i i like being with someone that understands some of this stuff like and talking through some of the stuff it's like yes like we're on the same (laughs) same like plane you know and stuff um so i love that and like i said i i feel like the least like bit qualified to you know be necessarily speaking about this but i feel like um some of the stuff isn't being said and so if if like if it's got to be me then then it has to be me i just i don't feel like i'm the best speaker but i'm thankful to be a part and and to say Mm. something um I, I was like going through that, through the question, some of the questions that you said you might want to ask me and stuff. And I was trying to, I was like, man, we didn't really cover a whole lot of what you wanted to, but, um, you did, uh, you were asking about like advice for aspiring, like audio technicians and stuff. And I think, um, one of the things that like my friend Vito says is like, and this is, this is something I just, this is probably my last thing is like that passion alone won't get you there. You know, so, and we're talking about whatever role you're serving in, like the passion itself won't lend you to being a Sunday school teacher or to be like a qualified Sunday school teacher and stuff like that. And so like using that passion to find the resources, to find the people to ask the right questions, is going to lead you to being the Martin Libby of, of videography and social media management and stuff like that, you know, um, so if if you're like an you know someone that's like interested in audio um or looking to become uh, become become someone in the production field in a in a very general sense I would just say like you have all the tools at your fingertips they're on your phone um to like learn about gear and to learn about a bunch of stuff covid really did a good number for all the people wanting to be, to become production folk and uh and then from there it's connecting people connecting with people networking with people that's going to get you to the the last mile of where you need to go so um i think that's all i got man um no man, i hope that helps so somebody much. <laughs> i i you know i i'm sure it will guys this has been mark carlberg on the unveiled podcast give him a follow on instagram at mark underscore carlberg he posts a ton of great stuff on there and i know he's going to continue posting especially since i'm now shouting it out and now he yeah. has to now i have to <laughs> yeah <laughs> and also mark man shout out to your instagram dude you've been uh recently blowing up 
having a lot of yeah. a lot of great success on there. I see the yeah. views. The views have been <laughs> skyrocketing. I didn't even know it's audio crazy. was a thing to get views on, but apparently it is. <laughs> I don't so, know how no. it blew up, honestly, but it's just. <laughs> There's a lot of people like there's a lot of people that do it, I guess, you know, so it's just like, yeah. yeah, yeah, I had no idea. So shout out to you guys. Give him a follow. Uh, maybe he'll update his YouTube channel. It only has two videos on it. <laughs> and I think it was like a year ago that he posted something. <laughs> I don't even know what I so, I don't even know what I have on there. Dear God, it was, it was something from Maryville. I don't know. Oh, was some, it? Yeah, okay. some front of house mix that you did and you're showing off. But guys, I, I think I, I need to update that. <laughs> I think you do, too. <laughs> Plenty of content, plenty of content coming soon. But thank you so much, Mark, Thanks, for coming man. on here. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. We'll catch you guys next time.